Welcome to Haltech NSP Elite Training Part 16. In this training tutorial, we're going to take a look at setting up our Hall Effect style home and trigger sensors with inner NSP software and also integrating and using our oscilloscope to make sure that we have everything configured properly. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with setting up our cam and crank pattern and configuration for our Elite systems using our NSP software. This is one of the most important critical things that we set up in our Haltech Elite. We have all kinds of inputs that we can configure, temp sensors, pressure sensors. If we don't have our cam and crank pattern correct, nothing on the Haltech will work properly. So we can't reference spark timing properly. And anything that's referencing engine position, such as injection timing, where we want to go in and start to spray our fuel, again, spark timing, everything's going to be wrong. And the Haltech may not even actually allow the engine to run. It may not even synchronize or allow the coils and injectors to fire if things are way out of whack. So we want to make sure that this is right before we head into doing any tuning, even trying to fire off our engine. If you're unsure of the cam and crank pattern that your engine has, we can use the oscilloscope to do a capture we learned about in the last tutorial and actually see that pattern and then we can use the data from the oscilloscope to help us change the configuration settings so the engine will fire up and run. What we're going to do here in the beginning of the tutorial is jump into the configuration area, learn where we can actually go in and probably change some things, and then talk about an OEM pattern versus a multi-tooth generic type of pattern that you might find yourself in. If you're doing a custom application with the Haltech, chances are you're probably going to be working with a custom camera crank pattern and we'll definitely be using the oscilloscope to be able to set and configure those details. Let's jump in here and take a look at where we can find setting up our trigger system for our, our engine that we're working with. I'm going to move from my fuel tuning page over here into the main page. And then here we'll go into our navigation tree and we want to be here under our trigger system. Under trigger system in our drop down, there's a lot of things that we can select here. We're going to find that they're basically all grayed out. Now the reason that we're finding things like trigger activation voltage and trigger arming voltage being grayed out is because in this situation here, we're selected on our sensor type as a Hall Effect type of sensor. This tutorial is gonna be going over working with a Hall Effect sensor and configuring those details for a custom application. Obviously, we're gonna be also covering then the OEM patterns that we can select in here. If you're unsure as to what type of sensors you're working with on your engine, you can very easily tell based on the number of wires that we have going into either the cam sensor or the crank sensor. If we're finding that we have two wires going to our camera crank sensor, then it's going to be a VR or magnetic type of sensor where the sensor produces its own magnetic output sinusoidal type of wave and the Haltech needs to know that because it needs to understand what type of pattern we're dealing with. So we're finding in the screenshot here, we can see that we have a magnetic VR sensor it will produce a sinusoidal wave. It'll go up and down. If we're dealing with a Hall Effect sensor that's traditionally three wires on the sensor and that's going to be producing a square wave signal, we can see it has a square wave pattern going back and forth. So those are going to be two completely different types of signals and the Hall Tech needs to be programmed to recognize that, which is where we find here in our engine configuration trigger system details, sensor type, Hall Effect. We can see here they're both set for trigger and home right now, the Hall Effect. Now, the engine that I'm working with here is going to be both Hall Effect cam and crank sensors. And what we're going to be discussing in this tutorial is going to be focused on that. The next tutorial is going to be focusing on dealing with VR or magnetic sensors. We see they're also called reluctor here, another terminology for the same thing. Um, they are different and they're different obviously because they have different waveforms. But if we're finding that we're talking about a square wave Hall Effect style signal, those will have more pulses as the engine speed increases. It's gonna be increasing in the frequency of the pulse. If we're dealing with the VR magnetic reluctor type of sensor, that's gonna be increasing in amplitude of that sinusoidal wave. So it is going to be different in the way that the Haltech has to process those signals. And again, we're gonna get into those specifics as we move through um, those tutorials or the, the next tutorial talking about the reluctor VR magnetic type of sensor. All right, for right now, we're focused on magnetic set or the, the Hall effect sensors, I'm sorry, for this tutorial. Let's go through here and just jump into our trigger type. This is where we need to set the individual pattern for the cam and crank that we're dealing with. So 
what specific number of pulses the Haltech is going to look for. We have a lot of options in our drop down menu. We can see here we have these generic options. These are going to be for even pattern configuration. So a 36 missing two on the crank and then maybe a plus one on the cam. Um, or you might have a 60 missing two on the crank and then you might have a plus one on the cam. Or you might have something like a 12 tooth, no missing teeth or a 24 tooth, no missing teeth on the, on the crank trigger and then you might have plus one on the home or maybe even have no home sensor, no cam sensor. You can run it in that configuration as well. Um, you're not able to do sequential injection or direct fire uh, coil per cylinder type of configuration if you don't have a cam sync. Most cases we do want a cam sync, but uh, you are able to configure that. So these generic options will allow you to account for those more generic type of patterns. A lot of OEM engines will have a unique pattern that's not going to fit in here to our generic patterns that are more evenly spaced. So for example, if we're taking a look down here at something like a 2JZ engine, so a 2JZ VVTi engine. We can see it's- Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.